We do not have an accurate picture of the outbreak here in the United States because testing has lagged uh, and people who want to get tested simply cannot get tested. We're still seeing, you know, really disturbing number of deaths coming out of Italy, coming out of Spain. And yet the president is talking about reopening the country before we know the extent of the outbreak here. Um, how do you make sense of that as an investor? Yeah, I think you hit the, the key points that that un until we gain some clarity on the path of the virus, uh, there is going to be so much uncertainty around the impact on GDP growth, uh, the impact on earnings growth, that we will see, continue to see an extended period of volatility. Um, and that volatility can be up days, it can be down days. Um, the rally today is certainly very nice. Um, it puts some, some confidence back into markets, but we think that, that it is too soon to say that uh, we have the all clear. I want to talk about tech in particular. Uh, we saw a big rally in Apple, Microsoft, Tesla. Um, do you see those particular rallies sustaining, or are they going to be vulnerable to uh, the swings, the, the gigantic swings that, that we've been seeing on a daily basis? We think that, that all risky assets are going to be vulnerable to the kinds of volatilities we've seen really over the last month uh, and several months. That uh, The key predicates we are looking at before we can get comfortable increasing risk in client portfolios have to do with, first of all, understanding the path of the virus. That's going to take at least another six to eight weeks in this country. Uh, second will be the understanding the impact on GDP growth and earnings per share. And certainly major drivers of that will be the degree and magnitude of stimulus and how that stimulus is implemented. So certainly the rally today on the uh, potential expectation of a large stimulus uh, program is somewhat merited, as well as the potential that if we get back to work sooner, then that will uh, limit some of the downside to GDP and earnings growth. We expect uh, GDP growth to be um, uh, worse than negative 10 percent, maybe around 13 percent negative in the second quarter, and earnings per share to take a 25 to 35 percent hit this year. Um, that's going to, you know, there are going to be a lot of negative headlines yet to come as we get to the path where we can understand those numbers, where we can get a sense that the virus has peaked and, and start to look through this. So uh, we ex expect uh, volatility to be around for at least another uh, month or two. So, Eric, talk a little bit about that and really this idea of what the guiding light's going to be. I mean, we're out, we know we're going to get this economic data uh, rolling out over the next few weeks that are going to show some pretty dire numbers. We're getting earnings going to start coming out. It's not really clear how helpful those results are going to be to sort of uh, getting a glean on what's going to happen in the future. So what's your guiding light here in terms of looking at fundamentals, looking at economic data that will give you a better sense of sort of where the economy is and where some of these companies stand? Well, we're looking at market indicators and, and market activity first. And so, obviously, from a fundamental standpoint, as I said, you need to understand the path of the virus. You need to have some sense around GDP growth and, and earnings per share. But before that, we need to see um, liquidity return to components of the markets. We've seen it in treasuries. Uh, we're starting to see evidence that, that uh, uh, mortgage-backed and, and corporate uh, uh, credit will normalize, although there's still a ways from that. We need to see uh, volatility start to come down in markets, and um, it's off the peak, but volatility has a memory. It's likely that volatility will stay high for a period of months before we go back to more normal levels of volatility. And finally, look, we're looking for a bottoming pattern in, in equity markets. We think that um, it is quite possible that, that the lows in the S&P 500 could be in the low 2000s. Uh, and uh, so we need to see an establishment of bottoming in the markets. And then we can turn to these more fundamental drivers of, of economic activity.